Only one of us is gonna make it out of this review alive. Spoiler alert, it's the cat. This is our review of 13 Dead End Drive. Thirteen Dead End Drive is a roll and move, murder mystery, player elimination game where your goal is to be the last survivor to inherit Aunt Agatha's fortune. At the start of the game, each of the character pieces are placed at the table, and each player is given a character card that they keep hidden to themselves. A character's portrait is revealed, and that character is now next in line to inherit the fortune. Players then take turns rolling dice and moving characters along the board. If your character's portrait is showing, your goal is to move your character out of the house so that you can claim the fortune. If it's not your character's portrait, you want to do everything in your power to make sure that character meets an untimely demise. The player whose character makes it out of the house with the fortune, or is the last player standing, wins. I used to play this game all the time when I was a kid. I used to play against my sister. So it's kind of fun to play it again as an adult to see how my strategies and game playing abilities have changed since then. When he first brought it out, I was like, I have never heard of this game before. It did have a lot of that uh, mousetrap, operation, clue, you know, all those games around that time, like esque feeling to it. So I was interested. I just, once again, never heard of it before. When you're setting up the game, it will remind you of those games like Mousetrap and the other ones because you have a whole big board to set up. We didn't even set it up right here. This is just a box, but you have a whole big wall that you set up where you put the portrait and you can hang a chandelier, which is another death trap. Then you have the stairs and you have the fireplace. You have the armor that's on the board, all the characters. And it really gets you into that feeling of a murder mystery or a whodunit kind of a thing. Yeah, the 3D or added tactile factor of the game really makes it worthwhile because, you know, instead of just drawing a card that says, this player dies, and you're like, oh, okay. You, you can actually go, all right, move here, boom, player's dead. It is very much a 90s game. And what I mean by that is, there's stickers that you have to put on to set everything up. Like you put a little blue sticker there and all that. You have the little cardboard pieces that you have to fit into pegs and move around. It has that putting a game together feel to it. It doesn't come out of the box ready to play. In fact, when you get the game, there's a rule book and there's a book for setup for how to put everything together and get the game ready to be played before you even get to the rule book. So the gameplay itself, granted, isn't super complicated. You have your characters, which can be kept hidden from everybody else, so everybody else won't know who you are. But for the most part, it's whose picture is on the wall, try to kill them. Or if it's your picture on the wall, try to get out of the house. There's really not a whole lot more to it because once your picture's on the wall, if you start moving towards the door, everyone's gonna be like, it's him! So you kind of lose that bluffing element pretty quickly. Yeah, so you have to be very careful because you can move any character you want and any character you touch, someone's going to be like, huh, that might be theirs. And so they're always going to be suspecting you. So if you right off the bat just start moving yours closer, then everyone's just going to know right away, like, all right, let's get rid of those two characters real quick. Especially if you're Lee and you're me playing the game, it's like, oh, Lee's those characters, let me kill them. Even if their picture's not up on the wall, I'm just going to kill them anyway. Get Lee out of the game. I could move a character to the trap, like I'm moving it to kill it. He'll be like, no. He's trying to trick me. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna kill that character. <laughs> there is a lot of luck in this game. How you move the characters is a dice roll. And you know how I feel about dice games. I give this one a little bit of leeway because it's basically a kid's game. So it doesn't need to have too much strategy so that kids can just play. They roll the dice, they move the people and they don't have to think too hard about it and they can still enjoy the game. But if you're playing it as an adult, looking back, there is a lot of luck to it. It may not be as fun as you remember because you're like, I just can't do anything because I'm rolling the dice and I suck at rolling dice. Yeah, but I felt like with these dice, you know, even if you had low numbers or if you rolled that like three times in a row, it wasn't, it was no big deal, right? You would just kind of move a character or not move one of your characters and it didn't really make or break you on that aspect of it. So another mechanic in the game is when you're moving people and you get them to the death trap, you still have to draw a card to see if you activate the death trap. And this one happens to activate the suit of armor. So this character would be dead. So one thing that I do want to mention is though, even though it's a kid's game and there's not a whole lot of strategy involved with it, they did put a lot of time in the theming of the game. All of the characters in the game also have a biography. 
they have all the information about them and then who they are, they have names and it goes into the whole story. It even talks about Aunt Agatha and how she died and who's getting her fortune and all these kind of things. So they put a lot of theming into this game, even though there's not a whole lot to it. So I do appreciate how much they thought about it, even back in the 90s when they were just putting a game together for kids. The age for this game is eight and up. So as much as we're talking about death traps and murder and being the last person to survive, collecting inheritance by bumping off your friends and family and the cat. How old were you when you played it? Well, that's yeah, <laughs> 90, that's probably, probably Five. eight, nine, 10. Mm. Okay, well, all right. Overall, I'm gonna give 13 Dead End Drive a four. We haven't really played a lot of roll and move games. And I mean, to be honest, this is just kind of old. I, Yes, I had fun moving people around, trying to guess who other characters were and things like that, but it brought me back, but it was all right. Nostalgia-wise, I obviously give it a 10. However, honestly-wise, as an adult playing it and recommending it to other gamers, it's probably a four or five. I'd probably say five because it is for a roll and move. It is still kind of fun. There is a lot of luck to it. And if you're okay with luck-based games, then it can definitely be a lot of fun. So I don't think it's out of the range of something board gamers can play, but honestly, it really is still kind of a kid's game, still a very 90s game. So a five. And Teresa gives it a 10. And Juliana gives it a six. And that was our review of 13 Dead End Drive. What'd you think? Are you ready to eliminate the competition for Aunt Agatha's fortune? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to see more Halloween content, check out our description below. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny.